What's up Achievers? So today we're gonna to go over the dumbbell power snatch and our exact progression of how we teach it. All right, so first things first, let me just show you what a dumbbell power snatch even looks like. All right, so you're gonna be right here, you're gonna be hinging back, explode, and bring the dumbbell overhead. Now it can be from a hang position, it can be from all the way from the floor, but all the same principles apply. Now, when you first look at that, it's kind of um, a lot to take in, right? There's a lot of lower body force, you have to bring it overhead, and you have to dip, and you have to coordinate all three of those movements all at once into one smooth motion. So it's a lot to take in at first, all right? But what I'm gonna do is break down each of these movements and make it so that each one seamlessly transitions into the other until you're finally able to do a dumbbell power snatch in no time. All right, so the first thing that we want to address is this idea that it's, while the dumbbell power snatch is a power movement, we want to think about control, finesse, and precision first, all right? So the first just general thought process you want to get behind is that precision is first and power is second. All right, now if you've watched my kettlebell clean video, you know that this is something that we abide by, but we can always add more power and force later on in a movement progression, but we can't really dial it back later on once we've established sort of these power habits. So we really like to go with control first, power second. All right, now how do we go about doing that? How do we achieve this sort of precision patterning first before the power aspect? And one way to do that is to really take the legs out of the equation, all right? So we're gonna do what's called a tall muscle snatch with a dumbbell, all right? So all you're gonna do is grab a lighter dumbbell, this is a 20 pound weight, and all you're gonna do is stand up as tall as you can, and then from there, you're gonna sort of use a little bit of body English to get the dumbbell overhead, all right? And then you're gonna bring the bell back into this sort of rack position and then lower it back down. All right, so you're right here, use a little bit of momentum and drive that um, dumbbell overhead, all right? And what you'll notice is if you try to bring the dumbbell out in front, it's just not gonna work. You have no leverage in this position. So your body's gonna naturally signal to you to, hey, let's bend the elbow, keep that arm in close as you go overhead. And that automatically teaches you to keep the weight in close without ever going through the full power snatching motion, all right? As soon as you introduce too much power into the equation, that's where a lot of funky things start to take place. So again, this is where precision first, power second really comes into play, all right? So this is a tall muscle snatch. I'll show you from this side as well. Gonna be right here, tall, use a little bit of momentum and drive the bell overhead, all right? So elbow comes first and then you punch up, all right? I'll show you on this side as well. All right, so now next step, all you're gonna do is now slowly introduce legs, all right? So again, we're not gonna go from here to suddenly power snatching. We're gonna just introduce a little bit more of a dip. So all you're gonna do is hinge back just slightly right here. And then from here, you're gonna drive into the floor and finish through with that muscle snatch. All right, so now we're entering into what's called a hang muscle snatch. So you're right here, push, and stand up tall. All right. All right, let me show you from the front. Right here, hang a little bit, push, and stand up tall. All right, notice by not jumping, by not coming up onto the toes, by not just adding a lot more power to the equation, you're just able to control everything a lot more. And you're able to really dial down this sort of groove that you need with your arm where the elbow comes up, and then you finally punch it up overhead, all right? Next step, it's pretty simple, just go even a little bit lower. So, you can go right here. So basically, dumbbell right between your knees. Same exact concept, you push into the floor and drive that arm up. Same thing, right your knees, drive and stand on up. And you're just gonna repeat that process until finally you get to the floor, right here. Able to maintain a good flat back position, push it to the floor and stand it up tall, all right? Now this is a movement that could also be called floor to overhead or hang to overhead, but all the same rules apply. You're just driving into the floor and standing up tall, all right? So it just gets that whole groove down, the whole pattern down without complicating things, 
by jumping, knowing where to put your feet, know how to position your knees, uh, and know how to land in that dip catch position. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how to introduce the dip to the overall dumbbell power snatch. If you remember in the original demo, I was here, and when I landed, I was in a sort of dip position. So why do we wanna dip even in the first place? So we tend to teach the dip later on in our progression, and we actually don't spend too much time on it because we find that it almost naturally happens. When you are going through your muscle snatches, you're gonna find that once that weight gets to a certain point where it becomes challenging enough, your body's gonna wanna naturally sort of dip underneath because it can't get it fully overhead. And so let's say this weight was three times the size. Let's say I could get it to about here. I could dip the rest of the way and catch it here, if that makes sense. So we're basically reducing that distance a little bit by dipping. So the dip is really helping out when that weight becomes too challenging to get fully overhead in a locked out position. All right, so now what does a dip look like when you're in that overhead position? For your feet, you wanna be pretty firm. We find that a lot of people will dip and kind of land in this sort of soft position. I want you to imagine that you have a bar on your back and you're about to come down into your squat position. And what you're gonna think about is firm feet. You're gonna think about pushing your knees out. And you're gonna basically have a strong base if you were to back squat or front squat, right? Same thing happens with the dip. You wanna be here, land in a very strong, sturdy position. If your knees are caving in, if your feet are too wide, if you're all over the place, that's not gonna feel very comfortable when you land, you wanna be in a strong, sturdy position, all right? So whatever your squat stance would be, we try to mimic that as much as possible. As far as when to introduce the dip, we like to do it once, again, once the weight gets challenging enough where you almost need to do it, but not quite there just yet, all right? So let's say at about 30 pounds, that's when you start to feel like you need to really dip. Start this next sequence uh, with 25 pounds, all right? So what you're gonna do is go into your muscle snatch, and all you're gonna do is finish right here. Add a little dip at the end, and then bring it back into the rack and bring it forward. Muscle snatch, dip, hold, get comfy here. Stand up, come up out of it. All right, let me show you this way. Muscle snatch, add the dip, and then stand up out of it. All right, let me switch sides. Muscle snatch, dip, and stand up out of it. All right, now let's say it took me two seconds to get into that dip position. The next set, or the next time I go through this, I might go snatch one second and then dip. And then over time, I reduce the amount of time between snatching and dipping until I finally get to the point where I dip almost instantaneously after I bring it overhead into that overhead lockout position, all right? So basically, take your time at first to snatch, get it overhead in a confident position, then dip, and then slowly reduce that timing until you're getting to a point where you're dipping almost as soon as you're getting that bell overhead. All right, so we went over the groove, right, with the muscle snatch, we went over the dip, after that point, when do we introduce actually extending all the way through the hips, getting up onto the toes, even leaving the floor, and then getting into that sort of catch bottom position, right? Because when you're doing it and putting it all together, you should actually be leaving the floor a smidge to actually get full hip extension and get as much power as possible. And we actually don't teach this, we like to just have the weight dictate how much force you're putting into the floor, right? So in that previous example, let's say 30 pounds is when you really need to use more force and you really need to dip underneath the bell. As you work that sort of pattern over time, when you get to 35 pounds, 40 pounds, 45 pounds, 50 pounds, your body's gonna naturally put more and more force into the ground and it's gonna naturally um, get to the point where you're gonna be on your toes and you're gonna have to shuffle your feet out. So we really don't try to artificially teach it, right? So if we were to show you how to dip and jump off the floor using a 15 pound weight, everything would just go haywire. And that's why you see a lot of people learning with really light weights and getting into these sort of weird patterns where their knees aren't stable, where their arms aren't quite overhead, 
with the dumbbells traveling out in front, and you have to do all these sort of remedial drills to try to fix everything. But as long as you follow this general progression, you'll find that your body does what it naturally needs to do because you're being mindful throughout that whole process. So basically all this to say, just let that sort of process happen organically. One little tip that I can offer, however, is to not to resist the urge to force the jump again. again. Again, this is all artificial stuff, right? And we see a lot of people just really forcing a big jump and we call that a donkey kick. People are thinking that there is a ton of force being applied to the ground when they are doing this sort of aggressive leap off the floor. But if you really think about it and you really slow it down, their feet are actually off of the floor. They're generating less power because their feet off the floor. Um, and so it's actually achieving the opposite effect. It feels that way because they're actually leaving the floor very like, in a aggressive manner, but it's actually not producing the effect that you want. So you actually want your feet in contact with the floor for as long as possible, and then shuffle your feet out barely off the floor. So it's a very slight jump that we're really trying to achieve, all right? So the whole goal is push, 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 slight shuffle out, all right? So don't think about doing this big leap off the floor because it's not achieving what you think it is achieving. All right, so lastly, my advice is to take your time throughout the process. If you watch the clean video, I told you not to rush it, right? So take your time, use lighter weights, and start with the muscle snatch pattern. Once you get that down, and that might take a couple days, it might take a few weeks, it might take a few months. Once you get it down, that's when you wanna to start to think about adding in that dip at the end, all right? So initially, catch, dip, and take your time. And then over time, again, over the course of a few sessions, weeks, months, you can start to reduce that time where you start to finally get into a position where you go overhead and dip almost instantaneously, simultaneously, right? And then after that point, start to use heavier and heavier weights, and eventually you'll get to the point where you do leave the floor a little bit, shuffle the feet out into a strong stance, and that's how you'll end up doing the dumbbell power snatch. But it's gonna take a while. It's gonna be a long progression of really stringing everything together because it's complex, right? And you wanna make things uh, happen as uh, or organically as possible. So don't worry about rushing through the process, just whatever step you are on in your journey for your dumbbell power snatch, just stay there for as long as your body tells you to stay there for, and don't rush it too much, all right? So that's all I have for you today. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that youtube -y stuff, that'll be awesome. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please, please leave them in the comment section below. But until next time, sweat out, happiness in.